Let's do this. This is MC Starman. Thank you, 354 people of you who are supporting this wonderful channel. That was my uh, um, Russell Brand in, 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 um, imitation. Impression. How are you doing, Day? I'm good. Overall, yeah. And what are we doing this week? We are talking about what's going on in the stars with the new moon coming and just coming out of the full moon right now. Um, there's a lot happening, and before the moon gets to be a new moon in Aries, it's going to make a lot of communication aspects to a lot of other planets, so it'll be fun to go over what's going on there. If you've got anything in your chart from Capricorn to Aries, you're probably going to get hit somewhere along the way here. There's been a lot going on in Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, and now Aries to add on to it, as you're probably familiar if you've been following our videos. And then we'll talk a bit about the body as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So this is uh, Soliduna Inspirations, Aries New Moon on Thursday, March 31st. Um, and these are the things that we're going to be featuring. So we got here, let's get the window down out of the way. So the sun, moon, Mercury, Chiron conjunction at the new moon. Um, that's going to be adventures in healing the soul. And then what we have also, we have, go ahead. The Jupiter-Neptune conjunction that's coming into play in Pisces. It's getting closer. It's going to happen probably about a week after the new moon. So getting really close now. Yeah, we're that's starting that, to feel that a lot, huh? Yeah, that quest for redemption. Uh, Liz Green, uh, uh, this book on uh, Neptune is called The Quest for Redemption. So we'll talk about that. And then we have. Then we have Venus, Mars, Saturn conjunction in Aries. In Aquarius, Aquarius. my dear. Oh, so I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Learning the dance, uh, the dance of creating community. Yeah. And that's in square to Uranus. Uh, times they are a changing. Um, lots of really interesting stuff going on in the stars. Um, how did you, uh, well, also um, uh, happy equinox to everybody. We're uh, just uh, a day after the equinox. We're doing this recording on the 21st um, and we're dealing with the new moon in uh, Aries. So we got it all charted out. Actually, we got it charted out um, for a week before when the moon comes into Capricorn. Um, so what are the, some of the things that we need to uh, keep into focus in this um, new moon? Well, it's in Aries, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, what does Aries feel like to you as a zodiacal sign? Zodiac sign, well, it feels like, like you said, it's the new uh, equinox is here. So it always feels like a new year. It's like a rebirth time. Mm -hmm. Aries also feels like the warrior and... Um, Full of energy and gump to get things done, get things moving, very creative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. The Aries is ruled by Mars. Mars is in conjunction with Venus and Saturn. So, so very Martian, you know, energy, the warrior is awakened. And so we have the, the divine union of the sun and the moon. So the, the sacred marriage, the sacred marriage is the is, is the conjunction of the new moon at the new moon of the sun and the moon together so then there's a this is the first new moon of the year so it really has kind of a you know kicking into gear but as we but the you know new moons are kind of opposites you know they're like a kind of laid back kind of energy kind of really introspective and and they kind of associated with the with the, the ebb of energy huh so yeah. So part of the, you know, the sun in Aries really wants to get going, but the new moon is kind of anti-climatic and it's in conjunction with Mercury. So Mercury is the trickster, uh, the psychopomp. Psychopomp is the guide of souls. And so, you know, the priest associated with the sacred marriage. So that sun, moon mercury and then the planet on the other side there that's chiron the wounded healer so we have sun moon uh, mercury chiron in aries so the wounded healer adds a, a very important uh, 
flavor where uh, this in you know this new moon which is a very reflective time heat you know with mercury and chiron all coming into conjunctions there the um, the the focus will be really on on facing our wounds and trying to heal ourselves uh, as this new year begins we all need to be strong and healthy um and so um that'll be a very interesting energy and then we then we and what else do we have um we have that uh, jupiter neptune conjunction there jupiter neptune and pisces we talked about that and the quest for redemption and we've been talking quite a bit about that jupiter neptune conjunction in pisces feels like um feels like a lot of rain to me and it feels like um like a lot of inspiration and a lot of wanting to feel some relief of things you know we're all hoping for some more good news although the world is kind of difficult so uh you know that brings a lot of tension but also some hope for relief so we'll have to pay close attention like you said it comes uh, short the, the exact conjunction comes um shortly about a week after the new moon so we're going to be like april 9th through 12 is the exact conjuncture conjunction of jupiter neptune so we'll keep an eye on that it feels like um a big new thing is coming with that and i don't know what that is but like there's this this big new it could be all sorts of things, good or bad, I guess, but it feels like a big new hope, maybe, or a big new project, connection to spirit. Yeah, uh, yeah it feels, um, yeah. New belief systems, since Pisces is really ruled um, by beliefs, and we hold a lot of beliefs in the energy of Pisces. Mm -hmm. uh, Jupiter also is about faith and about belief and about, uh, you know, wanting to become more than what we are. Yeah. And then Neptune has a very dissolving, it's a very mystical combination. You know, the two co-rulers of, of, of Pisces in conjunction together, wherever that falls in your chart. I know my own Venus is right here. So I, I, I've been feeling it quite a bit and it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, kind of a renewal process that's going on. And uh, it's the beginning of a long cycle that's going to last 14 years. So uh, very interesting energy associated with that. And I think we should, the next video we'll do, we'll do just about the Jupiter, Neptune. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And what else do we have in Aquarius there? Got Saturn and Venus and Mars. Venus and Mars are starting to separate their conjunction, hey? And Saturn's going to be smack in the middle for this new moon. It's uh, so we've been following Jupiter, I mean, Venus and Mars together since Venus went direct and they moved together for about six weeks there. And now Venus is finally starting to separate, but not before they can join with Saturn. Mm -hmm. And so Saturn is the mastery of the self. Mars is the hero quest. And so both of those planets are very strong. It feels like Saturn is the ruling planet, the ruling planet of all. Well, Saturn's really strong and Jupiter's really strong, both in their leading signs and they both rule the chart. So that'll be very interesting, but Saturn, I think, is a little stronger. So real discipline is needed, creativity, um, you know, the muse, the goddess of beauty, and then Mars, the hero, and a lot of new relationships, a lot of uh, enthusiasm towards relationship, but they're also, because it's all an air sign, you know, it's all very idealistic and revolutionary. Mm. And it's interesting, you know, we have to keep in mind that that Venus, Mars, Saturn is in square to Uranus. Yeah. So um, we're going to see um, the moon making um, three. We're going to follow. Uh, we, we did something new for today for uh, for this video where we're going to look at the few charts that lead to the full moon. Um, and so. Um, that's so going to be very kind of interesting the, as the moon comes along. 
Right. Well, Let's well, pull it up now. Sure, we'll yeah. do that. Let's do it. I guess my uh, imitation of Russell Brand wasn't very good. I'm going to have to work on that. Um, I think you got shy. You had it good. Really? Yeah. I, I guess you got to be way over the top, and yeah. I guess I can do that. Call it so much energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but for sure, you know, we're really grateful for all of you guys to support our channel. Uh, our last video had 150 views, which uh, we're increasing about 40 every episode. So at that rate, in um, in about 10 years, we'll have as many followers as Russell Brand. But uh, <laughs> in the meantime, um, we have you and we're grateful. And please, if you're watching this for the first time, subscribe to our channel uh, and, and um, follow and comment and ask questions. We love our people. So I'm going to make this chart on here, even though it's really small for you guys. Follow oh, no, that, that chart. shows up pretty good, actually. Huh? Yeah, it does. So, so what we're doing is we're following the moon as it goes through leading to the new moon. So the new moon is going to be over here. So this is a Saturday, March 26th. And, and you can, you know, you can follow this in yourself. But again, as the moon enters the fourth quarter, the ebb of energy goes down, goes up. And then what we'll have on the 26th is we'll have the conjunction of moon and pluto and that's gonna have some kind of depressive you know so then by next saturday we're gonna feel pretty you know into this um this uh this ebb of energy and then with moon going towards pluto and transiting pluto you know, there's a death and a rebirth in the moon Pluto conjunction. The moon, you know, the moon makes one full cycle every month, right? So it conjoins every planet every month. And that's kind of how we can guide our moods, you know, how what we're going through. So then that moon Pluto is going to be significant. What do you know about the moon Pluto as an alignment? I was going to say moon Moon in Capricorn, when I notice us going through that, as I've been witnessing how I feel when Moon goes through different signs, I definitely want to get work done. I'm like very focused and driven and pretty disciplined. So like, so like next weekend wouldn't be a weekend, I guess I'd be very called to party or anything. I'd be wanting to maybe get my projects done and get the work done. Planting would be a good time to get out in the garden. But then Moon Pluto is this, oh, you've brought it up to me as ancestral rage yes yes and the great mother i can't say i know much personally in witnessing charts except from what we've talked about which is really that ancestral rage more what's what's more about that why do you say that well uh, um, ancestral rage in that wherever pluto is this is where we connect with the 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 power that runs in our blood mm. you know it's you know it's it's about power pluto's about power the big p but it's the power of the great mother. It's the power, you know, of, of, of death and transformation. And so within all of us, there's something that seeks to die, to be reborn to a higher octave of expression. But in chart interpretation, whenever we have moon Pluto, there's usually, you know, we have to usually face the ancestral rage or what's you know, come from the mother, you know, and then moon Pluto is mm -hmm. often um, um, mm, symbolized by the devouring mother, you know, so, so then the, the facing of that, you know, so we can keep a look at that on Friday, on, on, on Saturday, the 26th, and then on the 28th, so the moon now continues to move, and then we talked about that Venus, Mars, Saturn, so on the on the 28th of March, uh, then we have that Moon, Venus, Mars, Saturn, conjunction in Aquarius. And we can see that red line there in square to, sat to Uranus. On the other side, when the Moon goes to the new Moon, and then a couple of days afterwards, the Moon will be in, con in conjunction with Uranus in square to those three planets. So we're going to you know about a week apart we're going to have the same alignment so you can keep track of that so probably around the third of april we're going to have 
um, second, third of April, we're going to have that moon Uranus conjunction in square to Mars, Venus, Saturn. So that's going to be very interesting uh, to witness. And we're liable to experience the same kind of energies. Now, you know, the moon is really at its ebb right now. You know, it's just a four days before the new moon. And then with Mars, Venus, Saturn, what is, you know, that's a, that's a, that's quite a, an adventure. And then you can see, huh, they're really close together, Venus and Saturn. What do you feel like with that? When I look at Mars and Venus, I kind of see them as like two, two lovers often, the masculine and the feminine, and they're coming to Saturn. It's just kind of like they're getting married or they're coming into like the discipline or the parents are coming and saying like, this is approved or this isn't, or this works, so this doesn't. <laughs> like there's this higher Ooh. authority. And then Aquarius, I wonder if that's connection to like, does it serve the community? Because Aquarius to me means a lot about community and the ideal and what we're moving into in the future. And so is, is your relationship to how you give and receive energy serving the community and like, and then the moon, your inner world and your unconscious is that serving that part of yourself as well. So I wonder if there'll be this like maybe rude wake up call or check in. Aquarius is also not very personal. Not very personal. So there but could be this outside of yourself check in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the Saturn and Uranus square are both, you know, both planets are the ruler of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Whenever we are associated with Venus and Mars, you know, Venus and Mars conjunctions are, are associated with cycles of relationship. So we've had a very unique year. Well, in the in last summer, we had a Mars-Venus conjunction in Leo in exact opposite and that was very interesting you know that was you know the end and the beginning of new relationships but then because of retrogression venus went ahead and moved past and then mars was slowly following behind and because of the retrogression venus went back all the way here and then mars caught up and then they've been traveling together so that's very unique in the Venus-Mars cycle. And then now that they're in conjunction with Saturn, then we have the Venus-Saturn cycle and the Saturn-Mars uh, cycle, which are also about two years each. So we're talking about a new cycle of relationship. And mm -hmm. it has a lot to do with this process of recreating community that we're going through with the Saturn Uranus square. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, and then with the great mother there, with mother, with, with the, the emotional feminine nature. And then again, that, you know, when moon gets over here in April, in the beginning of April, then that's going to be constellated again. So um, if you have planets, in the end degrees of any of the fixed signs. So, and a Taurus, and a Leo, and a Scorpio, you're going to feel that. So, pay attention to it. And that's when the moon comes. Okay. So, then, oops, I went back a chart. <laughs> um, technical difficulties. So, then, then on March 30th, two days later, again, now, we, the moon is Venus, uh, visiting the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, and at sunrise, all three of them are together wow. at, on the ascendant about 6.30 in the morning. And so then that mystical, you know, so we moon went from Pluto, darkness, to this, you know, kind of enthusiasm for creating community, to this uh, quest for redemption, and to saving the soul, you know, so quite significant, and it also makes angle here to the Venus, Mars, and it makes angle to Pluto as well, and it makes angle to Uranus, so the moon, in Pisces on Wednesday. So, you know, you guys kind of get the feel for how, you know, the week leading to this full moon will, a uh, new moon will be really, really powerful. And then we come. It's kind of like. Go ahead. I guess I see like 
when the sun's in Aries, even though it is this big get stuff done, focused, driven energy with that Mars rulership, it's also really vulnerable. It's like this like little new bud and it's so it's full of energy and ready to bloom, but it's not there. That's just where it's going. And so with the inner world, the moon kind of like it's transforming through Pluto, it's letting go of old things. And then it goes and like makes this connection with Mars and Venus. It's it's like it's doing this big letting go, dissolving, reworking in preparation for this new moon. Yes, yeah. So, so yeah, so that moon going through all of that. Yes. And uh, the alchemists, they talked about the Nuvo, nuevo lunium, lunium the, new, the new moon as being something to be you know the old astrologers they looked at the the the, the nuvi lunium as something very suspicious hmm. as a be you know as a you know this is the only time in the whole month that the moon is not visible hmm. and the moon represented for the old astrologer it represented me, you know, like we've been following the movement of the moon through the chart here for the last week or so. And so, you, you know, the, the, the movement of the moon was associated with our movement into the world, you know, so the, 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 the moon in uh, old astrologies played a lot more, had a lot more value than the sun. It was identified with the self much more than the sun. Um, and so, so then um, this death of the moon and this rebirth of the moon was was uh, was associated with time of deep uh, deep reconciliation you know so so then that the new moon comes with a conjunction with mercury and chiron you know the wounded healer and mercury all in aries we kind of have a, a sense of um of a powerful rebirth process, you know, beginning the new year, having to face our own wounds and have to communicate them, you know, and to express them and to see them. How is the state of our masculine uh, energy? How is the state of our feminine energy? What is this rebirth, the birth again? Uh, uh, processes, you know, what is that about? You know, new moons are like a seed planting, you know, so then, you know, how do we, interact with um with both sides of our nature and what is being born of us you know with the new year with the new moon with mercury and chiron and uh, there's a very interesting pattern very unique pattern now, have you seen such a simple chart before i've never seen someone's chart like this it's a uh, it's a uh, quite i've seen the natal charts like that too or very similar wow. but uh, but what it gives us an opportunity to do is that the mythical story behind it is really kind of fun we can <laughs> follow it as we would follow a trail so we have that sun moon chiron mercury in aries the mystical union of the sun moon supported by the psychopomp the guide of soul and the wounded healer uh, in the sign of the warrior you know so there's a real sense that wow we're being called to uh, the heroic journey of healing our soul and uh, we do so in a very revolutionary Uranian kind of way. So that Uranus, Saturn, square, discipline our creativity in creating community for redemption mm -hmm. and transformation. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, that's kind of how we read a chart. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? <laughs> what do you feel about that one i feel like it's on point <laughs> <laughs> i certainly feel that way huh i feel like the full moon that we just went through is kind of a preemptive to it as well that heal i guess it's the healing work and chiron that makes me feel that there's a lot of like things that were brought to the surface or maybe we got too ahead of ourselves or we got excited and the things that seem to be pulling in self-regulation which seem to be the most nourishing right right yeah. well it's interesting uh, since we started we started with that at the beginning of the year we started doing our videos together mm -hmm. and we've been following the sun and the moon well the sun the, the moon makes one full cycle every month but we've been following the sun 
moving through Capricorn and how it touched Pluto. And then we saw Venus and Mars come in and we saw Mercury and Mercury Venus turn retrograde and then the sun move into Aquarius. And then, and then the sun moved into Pisces and now the sun's moving into Aries. And it's interesting because, well, it's interesting because it really shows, you know, because the outer planets, Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, Chiron, and even Jupiter and Saturn, they move really slow. Whereas the sun and the moon move really fast and Mercury, Venus, and Mars follow them. So, so, so if you look at it, it's kind of a united chariot mm -hmm. of the sun and the moon. And as the sun has been moving through these signs, we've been seeing relationships with all of these outer planets that don't move very fast. Mm -hmm. And then as the sun moves out over the, over the spring, and moves out on this side, now Venus, Mercury, and Mars are going to follow the sun, and now all of those planets are going to be on the other side making oppositions. Mm -hmm. So now, so that's kind of the cycles of nature, they kind of repeat themselves, you know? So now we're seeing a sun, a sun, moon, Chiron, conjunction well the the new moon in libra will be a new moon in direct opposition to chiron so what we're experiencing at this new moon will be renewed and will have evolved in the next one or when the moon the sun and the moon are in cancer they'll be in square and they will have that you know that the you know soon in soon the full moon well, uh, 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 this next full moon that we're going to see with the the full moon in a Libra mm, Scorpio. and and Libra, yeah, first, <laughs> yes, first mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be forming a T square with Pluto. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to be revisiting the conjunction of Sun and Moon that we had in Pluto. So then these cycles keep repeating itself, and so then we can kind of learn these cycles and learn to predict how the energies are shifting mm -hmm. that's pretty complex huh it is but it's i think a very helpful tool well the table is so fun not huh, to see it all yeah. go and then so you uh, you have some ex interesting uh, uh, stuff to tell us about um um uh, the sun and moon in aries and what does the the aries signify in the body yeah, we're coming into Aries. Well, we're in Aries season now. And I um, I love astrology, but I've also done lots of studies, if not more, in plant medicine and the body. And so I'm um, learning to bridge my two favorite hobbies together. <laughs> and so Aries in the body rules the head and our face. And I know a lot of people are, at least here in BC, we have the mask mandates down, down. So a lot of people are letting their faces out more and learning to deal with all the things that have come from that mask means a thing so taking care of the face um, and the tissue salts um, connect these two too so tissue salt that rules Aries is Kali Foss you're pointing out Kali it's funny to me because Kali is a powerful goddess in um, represents Pluto also yeah which is going to be coming to aspect now, now I have a question for you in these salts you know so yeah. so these are homeopathic salts is that what they are kind of but not um there's different preparation and they're in a six x or a six ch which means that it's been diluted six times versus in homeopathic medicine it tends to get diluted a lot more okay. um the six only means that it's only they do use six in homeopathic medicine but uh the tissue salts are the 12 base minerals that all of our bodies have okay. the salts that make up our body and then in homeopathics, you go into a lot of minerals and elements you don't need and tons of plants and even animals. Mm. So this is a little bit more closer to home, closer to our body. Homeopathics is an energy medicine for everything out there versus these 12 salts are in every human body. And so, so if one wanted to get these salts, where would one go? Because yeah. I know you've been mentioning your, all of these. Go ahead. Your local health food store should and probably will have them. I know I work at the community farm store and we have them there. 
Um, and then would would you want it to be subscribed or somebody that watches this and says, well, I really would need that. It would really help me. Could you just get that and start using it? Yeah, they're very safe. So tissue salts you can take if you're on medications, which is good um, because a lot of people are on medications these days and you want to make sure you don't counter and track and hurt your body. But then um, they're all self, they're safe for self um, prescription. So because they're such a gentle medicine yet can be really effective if you notice that there's things that you're dealing with and there's a tissue salt that aligns to help balance that in the body you can safely go and administer them usually you take two pellets about three times a day or if you have an acute thing like say you have a headache you could take it every 15 minutes till your headache's gone mm. speaking of headaches uh califos which is the tissue salt for aries rules is also known as a nerve nutrient and it's really good for tension headaches it's also good if you have any like nerve pain, neurologic pain, sciatica, back aches that are kind of on a nerve level. Um, so if you have any of those issues, I recommend Califos for that. All those kind of symptoms that come up when the Aries in us is out of balance is how um, Dr. George Carey would have put it, who did a huge amount of work studying Schussler salts back in the 1800s. Um, Aries also tends to be on the go all the time, so there tends to be some nervous regulation we need to do during this next month here. And there's a few plants that are really good for that. Hops is really good for that. Probably don't recommend beer so much. You can also have it as uh, a tincture or you can have it as tea is probably a healthier ways to get it in you. Um, and then garlic nettles out stinging nettles so we that's mentioned exciting that. this is nettle season we're going to go yeah. pick nettles on front on, on on friday good and and get load up on that so cool yeah dry some for your season put them in soups love nettles mm -hmm. stinging nettle we're talking about um blessed thistle and cayenne are also really helpful so just different herbs blessed thistle really helps to calm the mind calm overheat in the body and cayenne even though it's spicy you probably know but it actually cools the system oh so again, that's interesting good if you're if you tend to be really hot blooded <laughs> or you get headaches a lot it helps to move that cardiovascular system where things get stagnant yeah and then it can be a good time to take care of your face give yourself a good face uh, massage give yourself good exfoliation Give yourself a head treatment or a haircut. Some people have actually know a lot of people have been getting a haircut. I like oh. your haircut. Well, that's what I was it. thinking. You know, I was see, oh wow, look at that. I got a haircut and I can treat my scalp. Oh, yeah. good, oh good. I must be in tune with the uh well I, I did I I cut my hair to go to coincide with uh with the with the equinox and uh it was kind of um uh restart for me. You know, I, I look at uh, cutting my hair as a as a shamanic practice, you know, where, you know, I kind of just want to let go of the last year and start afresh. So cool. I'm right in tune. I love that. I cut my dreads half of them off too, which is uh, quite a practice and, and a lot you made of energy this, release. And you made this beautiful, um, um, what do we call that? What your hat uh, is I called? The proper term for these hats, a dreadhead hat. I'll call it that. What's that? A dreadhead hat. A dreadhead hat. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. Fun to play with your creative projects. So, um, so this is Diana Robinson, and she can be contacted at Day by Day Healing on Gmail. She is uh, starting a new project. Why don't you tell us what you're starting? The detox. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm starting a three week detox tomorrow. Um, part of that Aries go energy springs finally here the body's finally getting ready and ready to start detoxing releasing letting go throughout the winter winter you might feel stagnant or you might have picked up some bad eating habits um, so it's a really good time to kind of reset yourself and I do that for three weeks um, so to really help support the liver and the hormone system three weeks is kind of that sweet spot where you can really start to see some good changes not only in your habits but also in hormone changes energy levels and the liver gets a full chance to to start replenishing itself and you and you're supporting people that want to join you on that yeah so i have a facebook group if you want to join um sorry that it's on facebook for some of you i respect and love that you're not on it if you're not <laughs> But it is on Facebook and I'm happy to do half hour to one hour consultations with people to see what 
form of detox serves you best right now and then ask you to join me and then at the end I hope to have a potluck with all of us who've been eating clean and getting our bodies reset fun 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 well we're gonna join you we're gonna join you um so this has been really fun how did you feel about this one uh, this uh, this this episode of our of our soul iluna inspirations soul iluna i like going about the energies that are gonna come about before the new moon hits or before the solar and lunar cycle that we're hitting goes because it gives you an idea of what to prepare for and with the new moon there is this planting of a seed but there's a lot of activity before that so it's nice to notice and be careful and tend to the self and the psyche on what's going to come up before we hit that new moon Cool. So we're going to start uh, doing more of this where we follow the moon to prepare you. Now we're kind of ahead. You know, we're about, uh, eight, you know, 10 days before the new moon. So the video will have a chance to get around, but also you'll have a chance to follow the moon and you can uh, refer to this. So that was really fun. Mm -hmm. Again, it's really important for us to uh, keep supporting the channel to if you knew uh, just stumbled upon this, please, please uh, press uh, the um, uh, subscribe button. That's really big. And also, if you have questions for us, comments, uh, suggestions, uh, drop a comment. Uh, we respond to all the comments. Reach out today if you want. Yeah, um, and and uh, she offers great services. And then you can also reach out to me. I uh, do uh, astrology readings and dream analysis. I'll give you my coordinates. So this is days again. Uh, and then and then my coordinates are this. Um, and the, uh, so the Healer and the Dreamer Astrology is our website and our YouTube channel. If creativity is a fire, I am your biggest fan. So I really help people find their passion. Uh, I go sometimes by MC Starman, which is kind of my um, fun moniker. But MC is... Um, MC is the middle of the sky in astrology. It's where your vocation is. So then I help people find their path uh, through dream analysis and through um, uh, astrology readings. Uh, so thanks again for tuning in, you guys. Thank you, Dave, for joining me. Ooh, thank you. That was Have fun. Me. Yeah. We'll do it again soon. Take care. Be well. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Happy spring. Happy new year. Yay.